You're listening to Answers for the Family with Alan Cardoza, right here on LA Talk Radio. Greetings to all of you listening around the world and a warm welcome as we bring you another edition of the Answers for the Family radio show. I'm your host, Alan Cardoza, and if you're a regular listener, thank you for joining us once again. If this is your first time, please make yourself at home as we bring you Answers for the Family. Now, each week, this show will address issues such as locating a runaway teen, family crisis intervention, building self-esteem, dealing with addictions, lasting health, and so much more. Now, having over 30 years' experience working with families in crisis, I've been fortunate to meet and work with some of the top professionals in many of the helping fields and skilled authors who are working to make this world a better place for all of us. Now, with me once again as co-host is our international ambassador to kindness, who is constantly making a positive difference in the lives of others, Gabriella Von Ray. Gabriella can be seen on national TV. She speaks at school assemblies, corporate events, and too many club events for me to name all of them, but she is spreading the Dare to be Kind movement around the world. Gabriella, I'm so happy our schedules finally aligned that we could both be on the show together. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I hope you're... you're yeah, it, it, uh, it was about 16 days, and, um, and I know for me that seemed like a long time, but for you having been on the road for 11 months, uh, believe me, I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand. People miss their home and their habits, and it is tiring when you're on the road. But I love what you do, Alan, and I think people don't know enough sometimes what you do for the children out there. So I want to thank you for doing that because runaway teens, it's never easy to deal with. This is true. Well, I thank you for that. But before we get to our topic, share a little bit about what's new and exciting in your life and in the movement. Okay, so what's very new and exciting in my life and indirectly this will flow over, as you know, between me towards the movement is my fourth book is finished and it's called Kindness is a Choice and I'm slowly rolling out teasers on social media in the next few weeks. So it will be a very exciting time and I hope we'll have everything printed and ready for Christmas gifts. But This book is a true self-help book with solutions, 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 whether it's in a corporate world, whether you have situations within your household, whether you're in a school, whether you're a teacher. I really made it for everyone. So I'm very happy about that. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. And of course, once it's uh, once it's done, we want to have you in here in studio because it's so much more fun when you're in here uh, and (laughs) and we can talk more about it. Um, Now, for those people that that don't know that much about the movement uh, and I'm talking about the Dare to be Kind movement, how can people get involved and follow it online? So one of the things is really easy, just do hashtag dare to be kind, you will find us everywhere. We have all our social media accounts with dare to be kind movement. And so it's it's truly easy to follow us. But one of the things that you can do is either become a kindness instigator. And if that doesn't appeal to you, then remember that your story is is worth something to another human being. I know this sounds very strange, but your pain, your story of something that you went through, no matter if you write it down in two paragraphs in a video, I will transcribe it. I'll do the work for you. But someone in the world reads your story and goes, aha, Mm -hmm. that's me. How did they know? So that fact that you can help someone just to feel less alone and maybe just inspired that you got out of it Mm -hmm. gives them ideas to move forward in their own lives. So those are two really good ways that you could help us immediately. Yep. Oh, I I couldn't agree more. And and, uh, for those listening, I am also um, one of the ones that is listed as a kindness instigator because I think that it's, it's a small thing that we can all do that grows into a big thing once we're sharing it with each other. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. All right. Now, um, before we get to our guest, now, 
if, if any of you have heard this show before, you've probably heard me plead with you to turn off the mainstream media propaganda. And I say that because I can't even refer to it as news any, any longer. But I want you to read, watch, or listen to those that promote inclusiveness, love, kindness, honesty, and civility in the debate of issues. Okay, mm-hmm. this, is, this is what our guest does, and this is what Gabriella does. Now, unfortunately for some, you know, it can be easy to, to feel like it's just impossible to, you know, to make a positive difference in these divisive times. But, but getting involved in the Dare to Be Kind movement or, again, in reading our guest's new book, Loving Out Loud, The Power of a Kind Word, it promises that our words can go a long way in making a positive difference, especially when we share them out loud. So with us is Robin Spiesman. Uh, she is the author of The Loving Out Loud book. She is an award-winning New York Times best-selling author and a popular keynote speaker who has appeared in the media for over three decades, including CBS's The Today Show. For She's been on the show more than 30 times. So we're glad to have her on for the first time here on LA Talk on Answers for the Family, which is part of LA Talk Radio. Robin, welcome to Answers for the Family. Thank you. I'm so happy to be on the show, Loving Out Loud. And of course, I'm in such good company with you both as you are obviously committed to using words and the power of of positivity and thoughts to make a difference. So I I am delighted to be here today to talk about my new book. Well, and and one of the things that you state in the introduction in the book to Loving Out Loud is, you know, you talk about sharing the magic of loving life uh, with each other and doing so out loud. So tell us a little bit more about how did you get to the point that that you were not only doing this, but you felt that it was time to write a book about it and spread the word to all of us? Well, it's a wonderful question. Uh, I wrote the book, Loving Out Loud, The Power of a Kind Word, as my, believe it or not, 75th book. I wrote a lot of little books in my early career as an educator and then went on to write quite a few very uh, important books that hopefully made life a little bit easier, better, brighter for parents, for families. And as an educator, I've always been devoted to teaching and also learning. But the lessons this time in this book, they turned around and taught me because two things inspired Loving Out Loud. One was grief. I lost both of my parents in the last few years, and I adored them. And I realized that all that love that was poured into me needed to be poured back into the world somehow. And it softened the pain of loss. And then I wrote this book because of love. Um, I'm newly remarried in eight years, and my husband, a man of a few words, married a woman of a lot of words. (laughs) And so he said to me on our first ballot, and say, sweetheart, what would you like for Valentine's Day? And I said, how about every morning you say something nice, something kind that sets my day on the right track? And he said, what about good morning, beautiful? And every day he started writing it, saying it. He put a little post-it note by the coffee maker, my cereal bowl. And then he began even texting if he forgot one day at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, good morning, beautiful. And it really changed the dynamic of how I wanted to be loved. And also, everyone around us started picking up on it and becoming more expressive. But that doesn't mean that we have to to be introverts or extroverts. It just means be who you are, but don't resist a generous thought. Mm, that sounds incredibly nice what you just said. I I really had to think about your words there. I love the title of your book and I, I just want to go back to that word, loving out loud, because I really like the word. Do you feel that in our society we actually don't do that? That we're that we we love but we don't say it enough? Well, everyone listening right now knows we've become an emoticon emoji society where instead of emoting, we sum it up in our own heart and we stamp the approval of a feeling instead of sharing it, 
out loud. We simply text it, we email it, and rapid fire moments. We yeah. turn these minutes and moments into seconds. And if you think about it, if I put a treasure box by your nightstand and said, all the kind things you've said or were said to you today, please write them down on little slips of paper. Please reread them one at a time. Could you put an emoji, a smiley face in that box? Even though those are wonderful ways to share your feelings, they're not the best way. Our brain, according to research, must hear positive words in order to, one, believe them, then we repeat them to ourselves. So think about this. Yesterday, I was serving a homeless community, um, an amazing group of individuals, a pre-Thanksgiving luncheon that we do every year that I initiated with the help of a philanthropist in Atlanta, Georgia. And I went around the room, and when I spoke to each person, I'd say to someone, how are you? And they'd answer and share with me their story. And I'd say to them, do you know you're the most important person in the room? And they'd look at me and they'd say, one woman said, no one's ever told me that. I said, yes, they have. They just did. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, you never know when someone's been validated throughout life or not. So mm -hmm. what can you do? You feel a nice thought. You bury it. You forget to say it. We get so busy. What if we slow down? We calm down. We hurry less. We worry less. What would happen? If we simply shared a kind word and made someone's day and they pass it on, that I think that's a tremendous opportunity on the power of words. And loving out loud becomes an action, a verb. Love is a verb instead of love being a noun. It becomes a gift we give each other, not in the romantic sense though it can be, but in the sense that we let someone else know we see them, they're not invisible. Yeah, yeah I love that you just said that. Sorry, Alan. No, go ahead. But, but you said something really, really important there, and I wrote that in my book. Most of us feel very invisible, even though uh, people can see us, they don't see us. They don't see the person and so I'm, I'm glad that you say that because it's so important for the listener to know that we can make someone feel visible in seconds just by smiling and saying something nice. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. You're welcome. And Alan, what, you, what, makes, what makes you feel loved out loud? Or give us a little idea about who you are and what matters to you about words and, and kindness. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um. I'm smiling because because I mean you're doing almost exactly what you did when you went in that room, which was great. It made me smile because it's that same feeling of, you know, they care about how I feel. You know, they you know I'm being noticed, I'm being recognized. So again, I appreciate that so much. Uh, and, and I think for me, a lot of it is, um, you know, we we talk about you know are are we more auditory? Are we more physical? Are we more touch? And uh, and and I love hearing the positive words. I on the drive here, I was I was talking to to my stepdad, and and we were talking about uh, memories and things like that. But but knowing that um, you know that he cares and that he's bringing up uh, things that we did, you know, when I was younger, and and what it meant to him at that time. Uh, you know, that was so wonderful. And again, that was him loving on me out loud and hopefully me doing the same for him. So, yeah, I, um, you know, I, I agree that I am one of those that's very auditory and I, I love hearing it. And, um, you know, it can be, and, and I'm glad that you, when you went in the area of saying, you know, this isn't just, you know, like relationship love, this is somebody that you meet or it is your children or it is your siblings. Uh, so, yeah, in fact, why don't you I mean, share a little bit about that um, as to how, you know, how parents can can really do more, because that's one of the things that I work with so much is working with uh, at risk youth. And there are so many times in which we're talking to a young person while we're taking them to a program that might be for drug rehabilitation or for something else. And and they're saying 
nobody talks to me like this. My parents don't even talk to me like this because you know, they'll say because they think that they're they're too busy or whatever. Um, so I think one of the things, and I know we have a lot of listeners that are parents, what are some of the, the key things that they can do to really get their children to understand how much they love them? Well, I think what's important to me, and certainly as a parent and as a parenting expert and educator, when I wrote Loving Out Loud, I cared about what is the depth of our relationship with our friends, our siblings, our families. And Raising Kinder Children, Chapter 4, was one of the most important chapters of all to me personally, because I really believe we can raise kinder children and teach kindness one child at a time. When we think about teens and we think about even children who are very young, you have to meet a child or a teen or a tween or a young adult or anyone for that matter where they are at. So when you first understand someone, what their interests are, you become interested in them. So when I meet a four-year-old or a five-year-old like I did yesterday, I said to a little boy, tell me about yourself. And he said he loved to play football. And I said, oh, are you a running back or do you like to tackle? Are you a kid? Who are you? He told me he was great at running with the ball. And I thought, wow, that was so awesome. He held his sister's hands when they said a little prayer over the meal. And I said, wow, you're all so great at being a brother. And he said, well, this is my cousin. I said, well, you're great at being a cousin. I said, high five. Thumbs up. So what happens is when we meet children, we can't, we can't, we have to meet them where they are. When we meet a teen who's had a difficult challenge, we have to understand someone by being interesting, instead of I'm the interesting one, you know, we can be that, but it's not, it's not enough anymore. It's, are we interested in someone else to learn about them? So, raising kinder children is really important to me. Being a kinder finder, understanding that when you're playing I Spy, instead of I Spy or something red, how about I Spy someone doing something nice? Mm-hmm. So, when you're at the grocery store and you're going to I spy someone just put that can back on the right shelf. I'm making someone else's job easier or I spy someone giving information to someone else. We talk about what does it mean to be helpful. See, when we say be nice to a child, what what is that? We have to learn how to talk in specifics. So when I help you, I might be kind because I made your day easier. In Loving Out Loud, I actually, Alan and Gabriella, I have a list of all the words that truly define the concept of love, loving out loud. There's like 50, 60, 70 words. And it's amazing how many ways we can teach children, but by inspiring them, this book gives you loads of information. But the bigger bigger thing this book does is says, here's how I wish to be loved. I wish to know how you feel about me so I can do a better job. I can rise to the occasion, be the best version of Robin that's possible, making it safe for people to say, gosh, you're driving me wild when you do that repetitive thing. You know, we have to make it safe for each other to talk about emotions and feelings so people don't go from zero to ten and blow up or get upset so children understand how to share what was wrong about their day and that be okay so that's what this book really goes into depth about and i really hope that it's going to make a tremendous difference i'm hearing that from teachers and parents but that's part of the mission of loving out loud is to teach children how to be a a kinder person, make friends more easily, get along with others. And uh, it's a a wonderful opportunity to to impact your own world. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Robin, I have a question about the negative part, too, because I'm sure you have advice in your book when people focus on the negative, whether it's a child or an adult, 
how do they make room for the good stuff too, for the positive intentions in their life? Do you have some tips on that? I do. And I think the first thing to say is loving out loud is not about being Pollyanna or wearing rose colored glasses. There are situations in life, there are moments when, you know, a complaint or a, the, the, no, the awareness of something negative is really okay. But I was just in a hospital visiting someone very dear to me. And instead of a complaint box, they had a prayer box where you could mm -hmm. put in a prayer. And I thought, what a beautiful, what a beautiful symbol, a prayer box instead of a complaint. And so when we start shifting our thoughts, we first have to be aware of how do you talk to yourself, your own roommate? What do you say to yourself in the morning? You look exhausted, tired, worn out, you have too much to do. Or do you wake up and look in the mirror and you say, we've got this. We're on a good track today. Take a deep breath one day at a time. So it's like, what do you say to yourself then? The idea of inspiring positivity how about trying, for those individuals, it's very hard to give a compliment or say something positive. Let's just say you have not been raised with a lot of um, positivity in your life or it's, it's a sign in your mind of weakness to be positive. It's amazing in my research how many ways I found people respond to being positive. All positive. So I started noticing that when people start becoming aware of someone else, this awareness, this concept of noticing what someone else is doing right, it becomes a way to pay your attention. Then when you say, I noticed what a good job you did when you loaded the dishwasher, that goes much farther than, gosh, I wish you would put your plates in the dishwasher. So. We all receive positivity better. We're more likely to do what someone asks if they present it in a more uh, meaningful manner. So I think the conversation here today is right now. Think about your complaint list. Like, listen to yourself. Are you complaining about the weather? Is it raining? Is it going to rain? Is it is it possibly raining tomorrow? Is it is it really a bad day outside? Or are you aware of your indoors under a roof? You're, you're safe, you're, you're sheltered, it's warm, it's lovely, you're around kind people. Really become more aware of what are you saying to the world? What are you putting out there? Are you hoping? Um, or are you harming? Are you lifting people up? Or are you bringing them down? Absolutely. How do you impact the world at this very minute today? Yeah, and you know, I, I I completely agree. And and a couple of thoughts came to mind. One of which was something I've talked about on the show is that I was one of the first male um, uh, room dads. And by the way, I think somebody needs to silence their texts. <laughs> um, I, I don't have it on. Oh, okay. So. Um, right. But, I don't know where it came from. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. Um, but anyway, is that is that we started uh, we started a program, and it started with kindergartners. And it was called Catch Them Doing Something Good. And so the focus, ah. the focus wasn't if, if, you know, if everybody's asked to sit down and, uh, you know, Billy's running around, you know, still all wound up running around doing something else. The focus wasn't then on Billy. The focus was, well, I'm so happy to see Kathy and Johnny and, and Sam that are all seated you know right in front of the teacher now with their arms crossed and their legs crossed and they're sitting there waiting to be read to and just drawing all of the focus on the catch them doing something good and just like you brought mm -hmm. up about the idea of having a complaint box okay what are you asking people to focus on as opposed to a prayer box as opposed to a acknowledgement of wonderful things box you know so yeah i think yeah we're 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 all kind of focused on that same thing, and I love the fact that again by writing the book, you are helping to get it out there to so many people, and uh, mm -hmm. I just really want to acknowledge you for that. I love that. And did you say that you're the a male room dad? Yeah, when my my, my kids are in their twenties now, <laughs> my boys yes. are, and but but when they were uh, going into preschool and kindergarten, 
uh, I went in and signed a document, and there was a document there that that as you went in as a parent, it said, you know, room moms, please sign here if you want to volunteer and what day you would be available. <laughs> and I just signed it. And, and and they said afterwards, when they made the announcements, announcement a week later, they said, well, I want you to know that, you know, we've, uh, you know, we're going to announce who our room parents are, and we're going to be changing the document we now have to say room parent. And, and, I, and, I, and then they announced because we have Mr. Cardoza. And I went, and by the way, I didn't complain about the document. I don't care. That wasn't the issue, you know. So, you know. Oh, was, I love it. You know, but it was just, you know, that was, you know, a way to be there with the kids, and 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 I think it was just one of the best experiences. That I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I love that. I love that you went in and made something better, and I think that's what loving out loud. My book is about. I was asked by my publisher, New World Library, who did I think would write an amazing foreword for the book? And as an author of many books, my dream foreword was going to be from anyone who made a change in this world. And the person that I envisioned was someone that they were so excited about, which was Donna Markova, PhD, who's the co-creator of the movement Random Acts of Kindness. Donna lives um, literally um, in Hawaii, and she said, well, if I like the book, and so not only did she like it, which was such a, a, a wonderful thing for me, but she also wrote the foreword, which is life-changing. If you read the first three pages of this book, you'll understand that decades ago, she named the acts of kindness random, and the concept there is truly that we all have the power to do these little kind ideas that literally can impact someone's life. And she began the forward with, I wish I had written this book. I am so glad Robin Spiesman did. And then she went on to talk about our times are turbulent and that LOL has meant prior to now laughing out loud or lots of luck. And that as she read the pages, the book transformed LOL into loving out loud and she named loving out loud an act of kindness so now this one book this one act is one of the most powerful things that costs nothing it's free it's going to be something once you insert in your life more love and you understand that it's nothing to be embarrassed about tell a friend i love you and, and say it first. Tell a teacher, I love you, and, and say it first. And explain the concept of love as something that is not just reserved for, you know, the, the feeling of romance. But it's, it's really meant to be shared. It's how we can do a good deed for a stranger you cannot even know them and ask their name next time you put a dollar in in a musician on the sidewalks um you know carrying case for their guitar or violin ask them what their name is and say i will remember your beautiful music i put a toy uh, one of my friends on her 65th birthday sent out dollar bills and said actually said she sent 20 dollar bills and asked each of us to give it away and do an act of kindness, which I talk about in my book because many people have done that in different ways. Well, my $20 bill went into a case from a musician who was in front of a Whole Foods in Atlanta in a, in a dark, literally, parking lot. It was the most beautiful music I had ever heard. And the sign said, I need to pay for food and gas to get back home. And so I put the $20 bill in the case. I thought he was going to pass out. You would have thought I, I laid down a million dollars. But it was the first bill in the case. And then other people started adding bills. And so I went first. But the bottom line was it wasn't about me. It was about the beautiful music that he was sharing so freely. And maybe he got back home or got a little closer because of my friend's 65th birthday gift. So how can we touch each other's and live out loud and love out loud and, and, and keep this going? Like everyone listening right now, I'm giving you an assignment. 
you don't know me. I've written a book called Loving Out Loud. Please read it and please give it away. Just that one act. And then remember to shift your to-do list to a to-love list, which is an mm-hmm. assignment in the book. It's my, it's what I live for. Instead of all my errands today, I wish to think about also who I need to love today and make the love list as important as my list of errands. That alone will shift your focus. Start there. All right, everybody, that's your marching orders. That That is Robin Spiesman, <laughs> author of Loving Out Loud. Uh, we're going to take a break. We will be right back. Stay right with us. We're list- You are listening to Answers for the Family. Founded over 30 years ago to meet the needs of families in crisis, West Shield has continually focused on resolving issues that negatively impact families and businesses. Our signature therapeutic transportation service helps to ensure that adolescents in crisis are safely transported to specialized schools, programs, and treatment centers with unsurpassed experience and success. We are supported by our full-service licensed investigation agency that has legally, professionally, and compassionately located hundreds of runaways and teens. We are experienced and qualified to help, offering solutions which may include referrals to our international network of top professionals in the fields of educational consulting, psychology, psychiatry, and investigations. Simply put, West Shield Adolescent Services and West Shield Investigations are the best solutions when your family is facing a personal crisis. Call 1-800-899-8585. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's 1-800-899-8585. Or visit our website at westshield.com. Thank you. And we're back. And uh, with me is our ambassador to kindness, Gabriella Von Ray. And we are speaking with Robin Spiesman, author of Loving Out Loud, The Power of a Kind Mm -hmm. Word. So, Robin, I would love to ask you um, a question that is actually from a listener, okay? Yes. This is this is what they're saying. They're in New Jersey, and her name is Jenny. I was recently in Chicago visiting my daughter, and as we were dining and shopping in around the city, I felt the vast majority of people around us were so cold and indifferent compared to the suburbs. I have been reading so much about the various gratitude and kindness movements, so I presume that is why I was drawn to pay attention. It feels as if their emotional foundation is based on fear and anxiety. What do you think, and will what will it take to transform environments that seem to promote these feelings? Well, the observation is what is certainly important. So she's like looking for a warmer environment. And so in a perfect world, wouldn't that be amazing if that we had the power to to shift other people, but we do not. Loving Out Loud is not a movement that states if you snap your fingers, if you go be kind, the world's going to be kinder. It really talks about focus on going first. Focus on the only person in this world you can control, which is yourself. Start there. And what that what that means and how that really flows is that when you begin seeking deeper connections with individuals, you start learning that you have the power. You have the power to connect with someone. Your tone of voice is a one way to begin. Hi, it's nice to see you. Instead of just, how are you today? That can go next. But you might start it with, how can you make the shift you want to see happen? So when you're around town, you're moving along, and you realize that if you smile to someone, they might think that's awkward, or you're stalking them, or, you know, it's kind of odd. And we're hoping that that does not become the norm. What we're trying to do is warm up the world a little bit. Haven't you seen someone come in a room and they're so upbeat and cheery and they're just there's just someone you just want to bottle. They're just mm-hmm. so uh, they're just happy. They seem like wow. And if you really get to know their story, 
it's not always such a happy story, but how did they have that ability? So I think that that's something that I work on daily. I try to embody the person I want to become more often by being that person. And so I think that to answer the question, anxiety and fear, this, this is a time that's difficult. Our, our world has a great deal of crisis going on, a lot of difficult news. But I think that we have to go back to, we have to soothe ourselves with goodness and kindness and, and, and peace and a little calmness and slow down a little bit. When you slow down a little, stop hurrying and trust the process a little more, people around you start to slow down. But if you're hurrying everyone up and you're the parent that says, got to go, got to go, we'll be late, we'll be late, uh, get your shoes, where's your book back? Then we are contributing to the noise that we're observing. And I think that's part of it, slowing down, enjoying the cup of coffee, tasting it, being aware you're really fortunate to start your day with that cup of coffee and being conscious, conscientious mm -hmm. of, of the magic of these little moments and start observing how beautiful they are. Because when something happens and goes wrong with, in our lives, I think, and then we wish, oh, I, I, if, if, if this happens, then, you know, then I'll, I'll do anything we have to stay with the day we've got. It's all we have and say, right now, how can I slow down and just make it better? Maybe even make it better for someone else if you can't change your own circumstances. Volunteer, give back, mm -hmm. do a good deed. Um, sometimes I leave pennies on the ground, heads up, and then someone picks one up and you know they're going to believe it and have a good day and it's lucky. So I like to create luck for other people. I don't know. I just think that loving out loud, this book is the most life-changing book I've ever written, and I've written a lot of books, but I believe we can infuse our day with thoughtfulness and help build a much better world for everyone around us. Well, Robin, one of the things that you said right from the beginning of this that I love is go first. You know, it doesn't take that much to go first. Be that first person to to ask how they're doing. Be that first person to comment how, you know, they have a beautiful hair or a beautiful smile or beautiful eyes or whatever it is that, that catches you. Uh, go first. And and for everybody that's out there thinking, well, you know, maybe that's, that's more difficult, okay? Um, I had to tell you, Gabriella is on the line. Gabriella not only went first, <laughs> Gabriella went first, and she's been traveling now for 11 months, going out to different communities and saying, I'm going first. I'm going first. I'm saying this. And she's leaving her mark everywhere she goes. We can all do that. We may not be able to leave our jobs and leave our family and go traveling around the world, but we can all do it. And as, as she says, we can do it within, you know, within our own community, within two miles of where we're at. So it, it really isn't that difficult. If you think about what others like Gabriella are doing, you can do your part and just today turn to somebody that you see in the elevator or walking down the street and give them a kind word and see how it lights them up. Gabrielle, I want to thank you. I mean, think about this. You're you're going around like the world daring daring people to be kind. Tell tell me just what's one thing I when I hang up from this wonderful interview, so thank you both. What Gabriella do you want me to learn from you? Because I'm so impressed with Aww. the conversation you've devoted yourself to and Alan to choose us to be on the show says so much about you but what do you want us what do you want me to think about what can i go do I, better because i can't wait to hear this one of the things and obviously this is due to my personal story but one of the big things that i noticed before i started this movement in 2012 is that we have this incredible internal want not just 
of wanting to be loved, but most people you speak to have this incredible craving of wanting to belong. They want to belong to a group. They want to belong to a family. They want to belong in their work, in their sport. They want somewhere to excel, to be seen, to be safe. And if you spend your life being unnoticed, unwanted, and unloved, That is a devastation for a human being. And we have, even though we're so incredibly strong and resilient, we do have a weak spot, if I may say it. I don't have another word so quickly for that. But we have that, that we are vulnerable. So that's our weak spot, if you want to, is that vulnerability of not being noticed, not being wanted, leaves leaves even more of wanting to belong. And so I realized very young in life that I remembered every single moment. And maybe it is because I spent three years in an orphanage. I don't know. I can't answer you that. But I can answer you that I realized that not everyone had that disposition. And so... uh, I think the one thing my dad ever said, my adopted father that was beautiful, is said... You are a ray of sunshine when you walk in any any place. You light up the room, the smile you have. And I went, oh. And I remember really hearing that. And then I realized that we need to dare, we need to prod people to want to shift. And like you said, shift yourself first because you can only teach by example. So for me... If we can if we can all hang up the phone and realize that the person across from you that might be rude, might be incredibly rude to you, is suffering, that the person across from you is struggling, and that they have no idea that they sound rude. And so just by pausing and then saying, hey, did you have a really rough day? They snap out of it right there and then. And they look at you with an understanding. And actually, they just really saw you for the first time. And then they go, was it that bad? And I go, a little. And then there's a whole conversation. And I've told this to Alan before because Mm -hmm. Alan knows how passionate (laughs) I am. And so, Robin, it's so beautiful. And I call it magic. I, I, for me, there is... Something in the physio, I I can never say this word, guys, this is for me in English, really hard word. Physiology, Mm -hmm. did I say it correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Physiology. If I put the accent, not the French way, my tongue rolls all of a sudden. (laughs) And so we change, right, Robin? Right, Alan? Yeah. We we stand taller when we hear it. We... I, I even I if if I'm the initiator, even I stand taller, and I need to ah. stand taller. Ask ask <laughs> ask Alan. I'm four eleven, Robin, and I might have a booming voice there, but I'm tiny. And so, when you help that person, you stand taller. Something changes in your body, and it's so beautiful. And that's what I mean with daring. We're afraid to be rejected, right? Oh, I shouldn't say anything. We we hope the other person is going to do it. Let's say that Alan, you and I, this will never happen, by the way. It's just an example. We're standing together and we see something. We will might look at each other and then we all wonder who is the one that's going to step up. And I always say, don't count on it. Just step up. Don't right. don't look left or right. Just step up. That's the dare. Mm-hmm. So is this that- is so interesting because at the end of this show, we all can agree: kindness matters. Being thoughtful counts. When you warm someone else's life, you receive the warmth yourself. The feel good that comes from giving is is really the the the, the return and and the receipt of this giving is far greater than the giving. And here we have mm-hmm. so much to be thankful for. If you wake up every day, um, I, I, uh, Heather Morris, a very well-known author who I respect deeply, said and quoted, 
one of the heroes of her story and said, if you wake up every day, if you wake up today, it's a good day. Mm-hmm. And so I think we can end on at least knowing that kindness counts and the way to have a, a, a happier family, a more joyful family, a family that loves being together is to just work on how we treat each other, mm-hmm. that what we say to each other matters. And you can never check in on someone enough and you can never really um, be kind enough. So keep it going. Love out loud. Loving out loud is my mission. I'm grateful for this time today to get to share it. And I wish you both a loving out loud journey. May everyone love you both are gifts to radio. So I am (laughs) very grateful to have just been on the show and, and thank you so much. Well, uh, let, let, let me end with a, a question. Um, if there was one thing, what is the one thing that you would most hope that readers will take away from the book? Well, I think it's right in line with Gabriella, and um, I take no credit for this, but in my book I share in Loving Out Loud that, that when you show up, you show up and you lift up, and then you never give up, that's the secret. That's the secret to looking up. That's the secret to a a better world. But you have to do the work. Showing up, got to show up, make the difference. Um, Don't just talk. Don't say, how can I help? Go help. Don't say, what can I do? Go do it. Mm-hmm. And then don't wait for someone to say, oh, you can lift my spirits or make my day or improve my life or better my world. Show up, lift up, and never give up. That's my message. Well, and we, we, we have an email. Love it. Yeah, we, we have an email coming in. So we have a, a listener that is uh, adding to the conversation. It says, the topic of mindfulness is making a huge difference in my children's school. A number of our elementary and middle schools have implemented these classes here in California. If we are going to make true societal changes, our kids need to be at the heart of it. It is wonderful to see them coming home in a positive frame of mind about their interactions with classmates. I can only express my greatest gratitude to all of you who are dedicated to this cause, and that is from Henry in San Francisco. Well, you have to love Henry. That's fantastic, Henry. He gets um, it. For noticing it. Yes, he gets it. He, In fact, he got it. Yeah. He doesn't just get it. He, <laughs> he got it. Didn't he? Yeah, and he sure and Robin, did. Robin, can you tell the listeners really quickly how they can get in touch with you? Yes. Yes, robinspeisman.com. It's R O B Y N S P. ZMAN.com has a all the books I've written, all the information about me, and more importantly, it really encourages you to love out loud. And when we gift this holiday season, um, give the gift of listening. I talk about that in Loving Out Loud. There's so many better gifts you can give than just material possessions. And so thank you. I, I hope people will read the book and just take a chance on me. Read this book, Loving Out Loud, The Power of a Kind Word, and watch what happens in your life. It's, it's like magic. Thank you so yep. much, Robin. And uh, Thank you both. Well, and please, l- let us know when the next book comes out. We would love to have you back. <laughs> well, I'm very grateful, and I had a wonderful, wonderful um, hour with you, and thank you for answers for the family and all the good work you're doing. Just good luck to you both. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 So, um, Gabriella? Um, yes, I'm still here. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, share a little bit with um, where you're at now and if there's anybody listening or where you're going next so that if there's somebody out there and, and, and they know that you're going to be there, maybe they can help set the stage a little bit for you, maybe your next two destinations. That'd be awesome, but not at the moment because I'm doing everything in my power to get the book out and in people's hands for a Christmas gift. 
Got because it. I believe that this fourth book, just like our guest just now on the show, will give us, um, yeah, it will. I think th these are topics that are so important and many of us have different angles and different perceptions of how to bring kindness into the world. So we can't talk about it enough. So at the moment, that's all right. That's the most important. Perfect. <laughs> well, um, for everybody, please be sure to put us on your calendar and tune in next Monday when we're going to replay one of our most popular shows with none other than our International Ambassador of Kindness, Gabriella Von Ray. And the topic is going to be Kindness and Gratitude for 2019 and Beyond. So please listen next week. Um, and if you get the opportunity, visit our archives of past interviews at AnswersForTheFamily.com or subscribe to the show through iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or our latest platform, iHeartRadio. If you like what you hear, please leave a review. You'll be helping others choose shows that will make a positive difference in their lives. And after you read Robin's book, Loving Out Loud, please leave a review for her book, too. It's one of the highest compliments that you can pay an author. Now, I'm wishing all of you great health, incredible happiness, and may you have many things to be thankful for uh, on this upcoming Thanksgiving and beyond. Be good humans and be with us again next week. Bye -bye. Hello, I'm Marty Cove. You might remember me from roles such as Sensei in the Karate Kid films. I've done over 100 films and countless stunts in my career, and I've always given 100%. With the damage done to my body over time, I needed to find relief from my chronic pain. My passion for health and fitness drove me to find a natural way to combat muscle pain. Teaming up with doctors, detectives, and a compounding pharmacist, we've created Marty's Cobra Cove Ultra Strength CBD Cream. It's the only thing that has been strong enough to knock out my pain. And fast. Honestly. You may have tried the rest, but it's time to try the best. It's legal, it's safe, and 100% effective. Show your pain. No mercy. Go to www.martyscobracove.com. You're listening to Answers for the Family with Alan Cardoza, right here on L.A. Talk Radio.